Hello and welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Jamie Hampton and I am here today with Lauren Cruz. And uh, Lauren is a Bible teacher, award winning nonfiction writer and speaker. She has been teaching women's Bible studies and speaking at women's events since 2000. Lauren's passion for learning God's word and love of language inspired her to write the book that we're going to be talking about today, which is called Rethinking, I'm sorry, it's called Strength of a Woman, Why You Are Proverbs 31. And she also has an an accompanying devotional, and we'll be talking about both of those today. But I'm really excited. Lauren, thanks for being here to talk with us. Thanks for having me. This is great. Well, the thing that I love about your book, I'm also kind of a word nerd. You describe yourself as a word nerd, and I am too. I love looking at the Hebrew and the Greek. Someday I would love to take a class on Hebrew and Greek so that I can read the Bible better, and I have a lexicon in the meantime that I kind of go back and look at, but I am just excited because this is not, as you said in the description, this is not your typical Proverbs 31 discussion. And all. yeah, this is, this is going to be exciting. So thanks for being on the show. And before we get started, we always like to ask our guests um, what your favorite prayer closet is. So where do you go to feel close to God? It could be a literal closet. It could be a chair that you like. It could be something completely off the wall. And we kind of like hearing the off the wall stuff too. So yeah, I wish mine were off a little more. Mine's pretty straight laced. It's, it's okay. <laughs> it is totally fine. I um, I have an office in my house. It's you know where my desk is and my books and everything. And I, I tend prayer is usually inspired by Bible study and and um, you know kind of what I'm working on and things. Uh, often I'll read something in the Bible and I'll just kind of you know begin to meditate and pray on it a bit. And, that, and there we go. So my prayer closet is my desk. Um, that and the only other quiet place is my car. <laughs> I can get away and just really be quiet. So um, I love that too. My car, especially if I'm traveling alone, I like, I pray out loud in my car sometimes. And I figure, you know, people can't tell if you're on the phone or if you're, you know, singing along with the radio. Right. That's right. There have been times though, I would do it when my kids were really little. So when my, my oldest is 14 now, but when he was really little, I just considered him kind of a captive audience. Like he, (laughs) And it didn't matter if he thought I was weird. So sometimes I would actually pray out loud. And there came a time when he was able to to speak. And I remember him saying, mommy, who are you talking to? Yeah. (laughs) Got a direct line. (laughs) Direct line from the car. Yes. That's right. Well, um, so I want to talk right away about, about your book, Strength of a Woman, Why You Are Proverbs 31. And the first thing that I want to tell you is I love that you, you say, you said something, um, when I was reading in the, I think it was probably in the introduction of your book, but just about how you didn't always like Proverbs 31 and the Proverbs 31 woman was really not, uh, not what it is to you now. So can you tell us about that and just kind of what it was that was intimidating about the Proverbs 31 woman or this commonly held picture of what the Proverbs 31 woman was? Sure. Um, I have been fortunate in my life that I have been both a stay-at-home mom and a working mom. And um, as my, you know, faith and understanding of the Bible grew a little bit, I, I just started to see Proverbs 31 and here, honestly, you'd hear it in, um, you know, sermons at church and stuff, but I would, I begin to be introduced to this lady a little bit more and more and she seemed like a standard and knowing my backstory knowing um issues that my friends have dealt with she just seemed like a really hard standard and it it really became exhausting um and even some friends even said you know this this was great for my grandma you know in my grandma's time but it really doesn't apply to us today and um I'm just of the belief that if it's in the Bible, it's got to apply to us even today. And I very much look at the Old Testament as part of the Bible that points us to Christ. And so if that's the case, even the Proverbs 31 woman somehow has to point us to Christ. And so I, uh, I, you know, I I, I was aware of it, but uh, just kind of kept her on the back burner as maybe we'll get to that later at another time. Uh, eventually, though, as I started digging in and you know became interested in it, I really 
began to see it in a very different light. The original Hebrew really transformed my understanding of her and uh, I kind of like her now. I don't see her as a standard, but I just see her as an incredible uh, example of, of how I don't have to be ashamed of my past. I don't have to be ashamed of my failures as a wife or a mom sometimes. And she truly is a woman of strength. Yeah. And I, you know, when I think of the Proverbs 31 woman, just the, the stereotypical, like what we look at that and, and pull out of it, it, it feels like a lot of pressure. It feels yeah. like we have to be all of these things all the time. And like somehow it's, it's a picture that we'll never measure up to. And so yeah. when we read it that way, which is out of context and is also the wrong way to look at it by measuring yourself against works. But, mm -hmm. but when we look at it that way, it can be damaging. And I think the Christian community has embraced in some ways, especially women, this idea of having it all together, looking like you've got it all together, being everything to everyone and doing it with a smile. And so I'm, I have not read the entire um, book and devotional. I will be though. I'm going to be, I almost ordered it last night, but I'm, I'm going to order it today because I really want to go through the whole thing and the devotional because of the, I, I just really think it's, it's going to be eye opening. But I know a little bit about it. So could you yeah. tell, yeah, could you just, um, so could you tell us about, first of all, what was the most, well, before we get into that, <laughs> what is the structure of your book and, and the devotional and how is it looking at Proverbs 31 differently? Because I, yeah. I know, but I don't think everybody knows. Right. It's very different. Um, you know, I always kind of put it ain't your mom is Proverbs 31. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it is looking at Proverbs 31 as an acrostic poem of the Hebrew alphabet. And it is. Um, Hebrew is a very verbal language and people, Jewish believers or Jewish people just spend a lot of time memorizing scripture. Um, and so little tricks like using an acrostic would be something that they would do to help with memorization. Psalms 119 is an acrostic poem. There's others in the Bible. And uh, in Hebrew, the alphabet is not just a sound. Like our English alphabet, it's just a sound. Hebrew has word pictures in the letters. It also has numeric values in the letters. And so as I begin to understand those word pictures, I begin to see links like, oh, that image would have triggered because of that word in the passage. And so it started to make some sense. And then as I did word studies, I began to say, well, wait a minute, we translated it this word, but really it's always used in the Bible this way. Why, mm. you know, why is it different? Oh, now I see the link. And so that became something I was really interested in. It's also called a heroic hymn, and a heroic hymn is a song that is sung over returning warriors from battle. Um, in the Bible, David has a heroic, a heroic hymn sung over him when he returns with Saul, killed a thousand, David killed 10,000. And so the idea of having a song sung over me, that's, wait a minute, it's not really a standard. It's, it's a way to celebrate my victories. Wow. Um, so I just began to really discover some really interesting stuff. And I thought, yeah, people might be interested in this. Now, how did you do that? Did you use a lexicon? Do you know Hebrew? Did you kind of dig in different places or what exactly, what was your process of uncovering some <laughs> yes. of this stuff? <laughs> all, all, of all of it. Yeah, I do have an MDiv, um, have a Master's of Divinity from New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. I did take uh, two two semesters of Hebrew, two semesters of Greek, but the, you, they don't teach you this in that class. They're just teaching you your, your grammar structures. Mm -hmm. um, a friend actually introduced me to the idea that there's word pictures behind the Hebrew. Yeah, I never I just, knew that. I knew that yeah. about some of the like Chinese characters and it's the some same. of the Japanese, but I did not know that about Hebrew. Yeah, Hebrew is a pictographic language, just like uh, hieroglyphics in Chinese. And so just began doing a lot of research in there. There's from one extreme to the other. So I really wanted to filter it through the Bible and what biblical teaching. I was not looking for any kind of secret code. I'm not right. looking for any, you know, special revelation. If you study it, it's there. It's, it's, you know, very interesting. 
Um, I actually was interviewed by a rabbi and I was so intimidated and he's like, you're right, it's there. And I was just like, yes, I, you know, it was a great validation. But, um, and then, and then for the word studies, I did lexicon and um, there's a really interesting site, Q Bible. You can look it up and you can actually read the word for word Hebrew translation. And it's often translated a little different. So I, I like that stuff. And so I just uh, dug deep in and kept, kept looking up words and trying to find, you know, what that link is. That is so neat. I love it too. And I, I definitely, um, so Q Bible, like the letter Q or Q U E. Okay. Nope. The letter Q, Q Bible, Bible. And I usually will just Google like Q Bible Hebrew. And then mm -hmm. it, it'll pull, it's like an interlinear um, Bible, right. you know, you can read it in one section. It's in Hebrew one section. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's King James version. And then the other section would be English, but it's got some really good cross references and strong is attached in there. And, um, you could see, um, a lot of different commentaries. And so I, I was able to really read through everything and get a, a fuller picture of what the words could mean and how they could be used. That is so neat. I love that. Well, what was the most surprising thing that you found? I'm sure you found a lot, but what is the most surprising <laughs> thing that you discovered as you kind of dug in to Proverbs 31? A few things. You're right. Um, one is that it does have a military um, theme. There are multiple references to her strength. There's a lot of different words used to describe her strength. There are a ton of references to military actions, the gains of the military, um, reconnaissance work, um, watchmen on the wall. And, and, and when we don't know the imagery and the wording, we miss a lot of that. Uh, the colors that are references, there's a lot of talk in there about wearing linen and purple mm -hmm. and blue. And, and those are all colors of the tabernacle. And those are all materials used in the tabernacle. And so God sees our work as holy as if we are ministering priests in front of his um, Shekinah glory in the tabernacle. And so I thought that was interesting. Um, finding out that Hebrew men or Jewish men, even today on this, you know, on Friday night when we open Shabbat, their holy day, they start the Shabbat service by singing this song over their wives in celebration of their wives. And I, like, why can't we do something like that in the church? You know, I mean, to yeah. actually recognize. Um, so Jewish women see this as just a song of our, our worth and our value and our strength. Mm -hmm. And Christian women see it as a standard. And so that was interesting too. But there's just, there's so much more. And in, in just one verse will just open up just so much more information on it. So it was fun. Um, a big thing I caught when I was doing research, uh, I, actually in a Christian commentary, the author, you know, made a comment that this is a, a, a passage used on Mother's Day all the time. And of course, there's women that aren't deserving of this. When I read that, it just stopped me cold. And I really got angry at that because I thought, okay, I know there's not great moms out there. I get that, but you're telling me that none of them are worth the redemption of Christ. None of them can have that work redeemed. All the errors I made as a mom can't be redeemed. And after uh, I just dug in a little more, I was able to really see how the, these can be stories and verses of redemption. So lots of cool things to discover. Well, you also mentioned that there is a part that pertains to spiritual warfare in yes. Proverbs 31. What part of Proverbs 31 is that? So the whole, the whole section is um, set up in themed chunks. Mm -hmm. The first four verses, really the first five verses, is our relationship established with Christ and how how we are to yoke ourselves to him and make a home with him and be moved by the Holy Spirit and all that we do. And then when you get down to about um, Proverbs 31, verse 16, um, the image for that one is actually a sword. And then verse 17 begins with the letter uh, het, which is a wall or a fence. And then another one is 
a snake, which is uh, Tet. It talks about doing reconnaissance work. And then further down, it talks about um, uh, one of the images is a fish hook and how you won't be captured and drug away because you're a watchman on the wall for your family. And so mm. some of those verses, even though in English we read them, you know, I'll, I'll just give you an example. One of them is um, she considers a vineyard and she purchases it with her gain. And we don't usually think of that as a spiritual warfare, but it is, um, it starts with the letter Zion which is a sword. And we know that the sword of the spirit is um, uh, used for us in spiritual warfare. It's part of our armor. And when you look at the words in there, it's really talking about how you are really prayerfully considered where you're going to plant yourself because you want to bear fruit for Christ and how even once you are planted, um, you know, a vine keeper, prunes and cuts and inspects uh the 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 grapes and um that zion that sword is used even as christians we use the word of god to prune us and cut us and to make sure that we are producing healthy fruit and so there's a lot of links um for that one you know the wall we often pray lord we pray for a hedge of protection and het is that hedge of protection and we often pray that our, you know, our family and our kids will not be hooked by the enemy and drawn away. And so um, when we pray Zadi, that letter is Zadi, it is a fish hook and how, you know, we're able to pull back with the Holy Spirit and protect them. So there, there are several references to um, the spiritual battles and prayer. That is so neat. It's like I'm picturing a zip drive. <laughs> in, you know, like this is like a zipped file where like on the surface, it looks like one thing, but you've got to unpack it and get to the different layers of what the meanings are. That's fascinating. I can't wait. To I read love that. Yeah, I <laughs> love that. That's going to have to remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Feel free to use it. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is very neat. Well, um, you had told me that you have a testimony about how the role that prayer played in getting this book published and yeah. what God said to you through going to him when you were looking to write and publish this book. Can you share yeah. that story with us? Yeah, you're the first I'm going to share this with. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I journaled everything as I wrote this because sometimes I would just hear God so clearly. I wanted to write it down and just go back to it and make sure I heard it correctly. You know, that mm -hmm. probably in my prayer life, that's one of my biggest struggles is, you know, did I hear you right, God? And I just uh. want to make sure I'm handling it correctly and, yeah, and not, not putting ideas like, oh yeah, that's, that's the answer because that's what I want to hear. You know, right. I, I want to make sure I'm hearing him correctly. And so, you know, after some time of prayer, I really clearly heard yes, just even that simple one word, yes. Mm -hmm. And I knew the book was going to be published, but when, you know, and in the publishing industry, it takes a really long time. And so I'm talking years into this. I'm still like, I think I heard you say yes, you know. But, right. Well, and you said it took years even for you to develop this, right? right. It wasn't, I mean, this was not just like, okay, I'm going to write this book and a few months yeah. later, pop it out and send it off. Yeah. Yeah. It took me a year to research and write it. And then it took me a year to really refine it, to finally get a, a an agent that would represent me. And then, and then this is where the cool part comes in. We finally got it. And I was, um, so I was the summer of my 49th birthday. Okay. And I'm, I'm finessing and cleaning this final draft up because she wants to start pitching it to all these different publishers. And I get to the, the middle verse of this acrostic poem and it starts with the letter Nun and I'll explain that, but it's the verse that says her husband is known at the city gates. Her husband is respected at the city gates. His name is known. And, um, and that's a terrible paraphrase, but, but the letter Nun is actually um, what begins this verse. It is a fish. And if you think of fish being all active and wiggly, it also relates to life. Okay. And in, in the Hebrew culture, the city gate is the center of life, right? Everything happened at the city gates. Well, none also holds the number value of 50. 
and a man can sit at the city gates when he's 50 years old. He's considered in Hebrew thinking old enough to be a judge, to sit at the gate. And so I'm here my 49th birthday this summer and I'm like, man, God, wouldn't it be great if I could get uh, an offer to publish by my 50th birthday, you know, this is the year. And I would so desire that just to make your name known because he's my bridegroom, right? And I wanna make his name known in all the centers and activities of my life. And so, okay, my birthday's on August 18th. And so the next year, it took a whole year, August 16th, my agent comes to me and she's like, we got, we got an offer. We got an offer. Here's the offer. Wow. I'm like, oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I'm, I'm reading it and I'm like, okay. And it was from one company and I'm like, okay, I'll sign it. Uh, was, yeah, yeah, okay. And I'm about to sign it. And like on the 18th, then on the 17th, she's like, no, 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 we got another offer. And I'm like, another offer. And so this was for, for the, my current publisher and it was for two books. And I was like, we didn't even care if we got two books. I just wanted one book. And on August 18th, when I turned 50 years old, I signed a contract for two books to be published. And I got my yes and I heard him right. And it was just an incredible way to experience God answering prayer and being so specific that I, I had no doubt that it was his answer. I love that. And, you know, I think we're afraid of the specifics. I know for me, I say all of the time, I trust God, yeah. but I, I don't trust myself to hear him right all the yeah. time. And so the journaling thing, I totally relate to that. Yeah. Um, there are times when I feel like I should tell someone something and I write it down because I think, I don't know if I should tell yeah. them that because I don't really know if that's from God and I don't want to presume <laughs> to say something, or if I feel like God tells me something, mm -hmm. I feel like I need to write it down and, and kind of sit on it and, and right. make sure that I have it dated and put there so that I know when it does happen, or if it does happen, that that was from God. And I think in that process, we get to know him better and we get to refine our hearing of his voice better by the trial mm -hmm. and error and kind of maybe seeing the patterns of when we get it right and when we don't and well what was the quality of that that made that more real can i you know recognize something about that later so that i know that he's speaking to me but i can't say that it's ever easy you know and no matter how many times you go through that it's never easy to know and so i love that idea of writing it down and then you know getting to go back and remember and and share it i mean god gets so right. much glory from that that's really neat well, he tells us, he tells us to remember and, ah, yes. you know, when you're so doubting um, your circumstances or what's going on around you or, or the word you think you hear, you know, I, I will break open my, my list and like, no, you answered me in this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And so if I am doubting uh, an answer that I think I've received or, or a direction to go to, you know, if I'm doubting it that much, I'll wait and let's, I'll, I'll ask for that clarification and, and when I know that I know that I'm just going to continue to go forward, but I, and I, you know, like you, I've kind of come to recognize a very specific way. Um, when I, when I feel God is prompting me, I, I have asked him, will you please speak to me in your word? I don't want to imagine an answer. I don't want to, you know, people speak a word and I, and I understand that, but I don't want to take even a, a spoken word unless it is just scripturally based. And so I really, you know, you'd ask me where my prayer place was. It's at my desk with my Bible. And mm -hmm. when I'll see a specific verse that speaks to me, you know, is that it, God? Is that how you want to talk to me? Or, or I'll, you know, be praying about something and then reading a specific verse. I'm like, I see that link, you know, I can see that chain and how you come to me. So I've come to just experience him speak in very simple terms. Like I don't get long flowing verse. I'd, I'll get a few words of an, um, an answer. And then it's always backed up with some kind of verse that ties to it. And so when you said, remember that brought, that reminded me, you know, God has said, don't remember, you know, when you praise him and remember and uh, the, the journaling definitely helps for me to stay on track and remember and, and understand. I well, and I love that you said that your prayer time springs out of your 
time reading the Bible mm -hmm. because sometimes, I mean, there are all different ways to pray and mm -hmm. there's a time for just laying out what you want for God, you know, just that happens too. Head. But yep. I, there's something so powerful about scripture driven prayer mm -hmm. because that is the time when you're reading God's word, you're taking it in, you're listening to him and you're doing that component of prayer that I think for me personally, I'm definitely more of a just talk and, and I have to really work on cultivating the listening, both right. in relationships and my relationship with God. Yeah. So that's very, I think that's just very important to remember. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the Bible study can be a springboard and should be a springboard for our prayers. Right. What would you say? Oh, go ahead. I was going to say emotion is, Bible study is, laying it out is. I mean, that's so cool about God is we can approach him in just so many different ways and still have an intimacy with him. Right. And for the person listening that thinks, oh my goodness, sitting there with a lexicon and a Bible and different <laughs> translations seems no. like horrible. I have to do that to pray, right? Like, nope, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's totally, yeah, the totally unique and uh, however God designed you. But right. what would you say your biggest prayer struggle is or a block or a barrier to the kind of prayer life that you would love if you could picture your perfect prayer life? Yeah. Um, I mentioned, you know, did I hear you right? Um, I test that all the time. The other, man, and this is such a struggle, is, God, I know that you can, but will you? And, you know, I, you know, my mom has a chronic illness, and I know you can heal her, but will you ever? And um, do I pray? Do, why bother praying? God, you already know what you're going to do. And, you know, that I just struggle with some of that sometimes. You know, like, I know, I know you know what's going on, and I know you're sovereign and on the throne, and you already have a plan. So why, why should I bother praying? Um, but, you know, he invites us into that intimacy, and he invites us into the holy. And so, I, I would hate to not pray and miss just a really great opportunity to experience him at an even deeper level. So um, some prayers are short and sweet and some prayers might be a little more involved and some prayers are just simply confessing um, my doubts and asking him to grow my faith. And um, it, it's just depending on the day what the struggle might be. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, and I think even those struggles, deepen our relationship with God when we go to him with them, when we don't right. let them derail us, when we, you know, press into them and go to God with them and just right. are honest. I think that's so important is just being honest with, you know, saying I'm not perfect and, and not viewing the Proverbs 31 woman as having it all together, but you right. know, just knowing we're, we all have our struggles and we all have our, our stuff, but when we go to God with those things, that's where the transformation happens. And even those things that hold us back from prayer or relationship with God can be used to deepen our relationship with him and to grow in ways that maybe we wouldn't if we had it all together. <laughs> yeah, ac yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I, the, the biggest time I've experienced growth or just the awesomeness of God is in my times of need. And you know, I hope I never get to a place where I think I don't need him anymore. That would be terrible. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, um, oh, the, just to experience him on that spiritual plane is an honor and a privilege and a blessing of my relationship with him. So it's important. Well, if you could pick one takeaway that a woman reading your strength of a woman and doing the Bible study would, would get from it. If you could pick just one, what would it be? Oh, you know, my biggest thing for ladies when they read this is just, you are so not qualified or disqualified. You are qualified by God. Um, I have stories in ev for um, almost every letter. There's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. I have 20 stories of very, unlikely Proverbs 31 women. And if you knew them in the thick of it uh, and looked back at what they went through, you would never think that they could be considered a Proverbs 31 woman, but nothing they did disqualified from the love of God and from being used by God. And every story talks about an incredible depth of prayer. I mean, I, I have stories of women who 
were so involved in drugs that their only prayer was, I don't care what you do to me, God, but just, you know, to save my kids, you know, um, women that dealt with abuse, um, women who, you know, five husbands, how could she be a Proverbs 31 woman? But she, she can be. Uh, and so I, what I would want my readers to know is you are just, you're not disqualified. Um, there is a depth to God that we cannot hit bottom. He's always going to be there with us and for us. Amen. I love that. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's something that I don't know anyone that doesn't need that mm. message at yeah. some point, no matter how long you've been a Christian. I mean, mm -hmm. we have these doubts of whether we're worthy to be even called children of God or whether right. we're, you know, whether we're worthy to teach Sunday school or host a podcast or write a book, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's exactly. there, that it, I think that's a huge struggle and that's a barrier to living our fullest life. And I think that, you know, just that picture of God singing this song over mm -hmm. us is so mm -hmm. powerful. And I think that's, that's something I'll take away for sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he definitely does. Um, you are a heroine and he definitely acknowledges your strength. And I think that's another cool takeaway of the book. You know, we, we can't do it in our own strength. We will get tired and we will likely fail, but we have to yoke ourselves to Christ and we have to do it in his strength and he provides it. Amen. <laughs> well, how can listeners con connect with you and find your books? What's the best way? Um, my book is on, both books are on Amazon. Um, it's Strength of a Woman. And if you do Strength of a Woman Cruise, I will probably put it, pull up. It's C-R-E-W-S. I also have a website, laurencruise.com. And I can fulfill orders through my website. And I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. <laughs> So I'm out there. It's usually Lauren Cruz, A number two Z, A two Z on Instagram and Twitter. All right. Well, we'll get that out and we'll be tagging you on social media and putting, putting everything out there when this interview goes live. So people Great, will thanks. get to see. Well, how can we pray for you today? I usually close in prayer for our guests. So how can we be praying for you personally, professionally, whatever? I'm, I'm going to say professional slash personal. I, so I'm also a public school teacher mm. and I, God bless I, you. <laughs> yeah. I teach seniors and I they just, that. they lost so much. Yeah. They lost so much. And so we don't have a plan yet as to exactly how we're going to return. But when we do, um, I have said that I will go back to brick and mortar if that's required. And just all the questions and challenges that go with that. And so my prayer request really is just, you know, pray for this return of school, whatever that looks like, and just for the health and well-being of everybody involved. All right. Well, we will do that. Thanks. Well, thank you again, Lauren, so much for being here with us. This was really neat. I'm, I'm so excited to read your book and get this interview out there so more people can read your book. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Father, we just come before you today, thankful for this conversation. Thank you for your word, just the depth of your word, Lord. Just when we think we know what it says, we, we start unpeeling these layers of the Hebrew and the meaning and the context. Father, we just pray that you would give all of us a passion to and, and the ability to just read your word and to worship you through that in spirit and in truth, that you would just constantly be revealing yourself to us through your Holy Spirit, through practical means like Bible study and um, reading books and all the things that can help us to just dig deeper and uncover these, these gems that you have for us to learn. Um, thank you for the Proverbs 31 woman, Lord. We just thank you for this book that Lauren has put out there in the Bible study. And, and thank you for this picture of strength and just the knowledge that this is not a standard, that you've just given us this picture of 
of a song that you're singing over us, of things that you've equipped us with, of carrying a sword, the sword of the spirit, the word of God into our families and our workplaces and our lives and our relationships. And that it's by your power that we live this abundant life that you've called us to. It's through nothing of ourselves. Give us the, the deep wisdom to know that it's our weaknesses that allow you to work most powerfully in us, that that would be joy to us, God, that this woman that's so strong and so capable is who we are when we're in you, God, not who we are through what we can muster up within ourselves, God, and not some standard. This is who we are. This is who you make us. And we just give you thanks and praise for that, God. And I just lift up Lauren, pray that you would open doors for her through this book and um, just allow allow this this message that she has worked for so many years to get out there to reach many many women and bless them and heal them and draw them close to you we pray that it would bring salvation for women that felt less than or unworthy to approach your throne and we just pray that you would just powerfully use this in in more ways than Lauren could have ever asked or imagined we lift up uh, just her job to you, Lord, and, and just all of us in the country and across the world with schools reopening um, during the COVID uh, craziness, Lord, we just, we pray, first of all, that you would give wisdom to the people that are in charge. Um, I know there are so many different people looking at things from so many different perspectives, and I just don't envy those making decisions. We pray that you would pour out your spirit of wisdom on the people making decisions for how school will go about and if it will m meet in a brick and mortar school or be virtual or a combination. We just pray that you would um, protect teachers and students and faculty and administrators. Um, if they do go back to school, that you would just give them protection physically um, from illness, that, that during this difficult time that you would accomplish just amazing things, God, that you would be at work like you promised to be, that um, through this time when a lot of people are anxious, that you would just raise up believers in the schools and outside of the schools and um, just allow us to be a light, a city on a hill. Help us, even when we don't agree with each other, to be unified in brotherly love, God. Cut through any of the conflict that the enemy would want to use to divide us. And we just pray, God, um, just for Lauren's particular school, that you would bless them, bless her students, and, and just put her in a place where you have called her to and where you will just um, use her in mighty ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much.